this guy's booking it. He's like, shit. <laughs> the doom is coming. Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy, Nighttime Speed here. I know it might not look like it, but it's actually 11 p.m. where I am right now. And tomorrow morning, I have ping pong. So I thought... Might as well make a video very quickly for you guys, kind of talk about what do you do when the game is hard? How do you recover from a bad match? Recently in a ranked game, this is on my 11,000 MMR account, I'll prove it to you guys so you know I'm not lying to you. I had a game, things were pretty bad, I'll show you the net worth graph, right? Game was not looking hot, it was not cool, you can see the net worths, both supports on the enemy team, higher net worth than my supports, every single core, higher net worth than our cores. Not looking like a good game, but we were able to take the game eventually and there was a couple of major plays that I made and that my team made that were really crucial to getting us back into this game. So let's talk about some Dota. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. Okay, so the first play of the game that was really, really important was a read on the Roshan pit. So we assume that they might be Roshan bottom here. And also I have Doom, and basically how Doom works as a hero is every time you have Doom, you can almost guarantee a kill. Obviously it's not exactly a guaranteed kill, let's be real, okay. It's pretty close to that though, right? And so in this clip, my W is on cooldown, I'm gonna push in the wave just by auto attacking it. It's a little risky because there's a tower here. However, we're 6k behind, and I understand that we cannot teamfight them. I mean, it's not even close. I don't have finished Shivas. This guy does, right? So I'm not even close to his impact due to the fact that he has a finished item, and my troll doesn't even have Battle Fury yet. So, right, compared to something like their Dragon I carry who has a finished Mage Slayer, it's just not even close. We're not going to have comparable impact on our heroes. And it's very important to understand we can't teamfight. And so with the knowledge of this, I'm telling my team, come top, we can kill this guy. Play the side lanes, look to force TPs. I want to split up the map and give my troll some space. So we doom up the DK. We kind of read that they were roaching, and because they were roaching, they were late to TP here. This was a risky play, but I was pretty happy taking the risk of killing DK because I'm doom. He's likely to die, right? Killing DK and sacrificing a hero. I think maybe only Furion dies here, which is like a great trait. Actually, does he, he does he even die? I think they end up catching the profit, which is totally reasonable and expected. But that's a big kill, right? Because it lets our troll get out to the bottom side of the map. Because they all TP top, it allows me to actually farm up mid here, and it definitely delays the game for our later timings that we desperately need. The next play is actually in a very similar vein, and then what I do after that is also just as crucial. So we came over here, we pushed out bottom. Uh, I'm not showing at this point, I have an Observer Ward, and this is something I like to do. When the game is really hard and it's nighttime, I'll always buy Observer Wards, because I know I'm going to be, as the core, pushing out into the side lanes. I'm going to be moving out onto the map, right? Where my supports, I mean, maybe Furion could TP around, so he probably should be warding, but he wasn't. He was like super lazy with the wards this game. No offense, Furion, if you're... Well, I guess offense. He should be better about it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I place a ward here, and, and I, I scout this guy. I ping that my Doom is up in 12, and I'm hoping he's going to stick around. I don't know exactly what he's going to do, but there is a chance he'd go for the lotuses and that's exactly what he did he went for the lotuses and with shiva finished i can actually kill this guy nearly solo and so doom came up in one we led with shivas uh he couldn't get a surge off even if he got it off it would have gotten purged and we were able to pick up the kill and actually get out as well i knew doom would kill at this range funny enough venge almost got the swap off uh swap actually does save doom like through doom so whew, that was close but uh yeah we we get that and we get a ton of TPs again. And so just notice what this does. Notice why these pickoff plays, even if I didn't kill the Darkseer, even if let's say he lived, which would have sucked, but let's say he lived once again. What does it enable? It enables this. And so taking a bit of risk, notice how I don't fully commit to the play. I didn't die either time. That is the key part to it because people will be like, oh, I, I, I am making space, but are you feeding? Are you getting your whole team killed by overextending, right? What I'm doing is I'm using Doom, how broken this ability is, to get that pick off, to get that key kill, and then once again when Doom is on cooldown, now I'm gonna split the map, but this is the key. After I get this bottom kill, look what I do. I hit the portal, I come top now, and this is gonna allow me to farm all these back camps. And in, in losing games like this, these camps are almost completely free, right? I'm able to stack it here, and I'm basically left alone. Right? And the reality is, is I have to do this. If I fight without Doom, there's a really high chance we'll just lose the game. Right? It's very important that I tell my team and I just have the patience to not force it. I just farm on my blink. And so that's what we do with Scorched Earth. We're going to cut up this wave. After I cut this wave, I think I was a little afraid they might hunt me. I was definitely unsure, but they were showing bottom. So I felt kind of safe. 
Uh, you know, once again, it's hard to exactly say what what they're exactly doing. We don't really know. Uh, we don't go on DK here only because we don't see them, uh, right? He did show top and, you know, we considered it, but we thought that maybe they would be baiting him. I guess, I guess maybe he would have died. Darkseer can surge him though, so it's hard to say. He might be able to walk it off. Uh, so we ended up not going for this play. One of the key turning points of this game as well was this mid fight. And because I have a good amount of net worth, right, especially this blink dagger, I'm actually able to initiate the fight. And the reason why Doom is so broken is because even if you're losing the game, a good Doom will win the fight, right? Because you're just going to remove someone from the team fight, right? They get silenced and they can't heal. It's it's pretty crippling <laughs> to the majority of the hero pool. Almost every hero can't really afford to be doomed. Uh, and so I go in here, I have my Shivas completed, and I know that with Infernal Blade, I can maybe prevent her from blinking. I think he actually could have blinked out here. And that's the problem with trying to Doom TA. Uh, I think he could have, I really think he could have blinked out. So maybe I shouldn't have doomed this guy. Uh, but fortunately he didn't react in that way. Maybe he didn't know that he could do that. But yeah, at this point with like one decent lion stun, also the lion got the triple suck. <sighs> oh, that's a big suck. That's a big suck. But yeah, the TA tried to TP out, but she dies in the fountain. Not surprisingly, it's doom. <laughs> oh, he dies in the fountain. That's crazy. But we're 11k down and we win the fight because we get a, a big initiation. We hit the Shivas on the multiple heroes. That canceled the tiny blink, so he wasn't able to get an initiation off on that fight. And I'm really tanky at this point of the game, right? This Doom hero has like a billion health, and with Shivas, a ton of armor and a ton of survivability. So, also, you know, a ton of movement speed with the W giving extra movement speed, Light Collector giving me 10% movement speed. I'm zooming when I click phase boots, I'm practically haste. Uh, another reason why this hero is so strong. So, we were able to cut the, the lead in half with one good initiation primarily playing around our timings. Do you guys know on this channel, I'm always stressing to you, timings, timings, timings. When you hit a timing, go crazy. When you don't have a timing, chill. When your teammates hit a timing, go crazy. When they don't, when when their spells are on cooldown, chill. You have to be the guy who's leading this type of thing because it changes the game, right? My Shiva's timing, my blink timing, my doom timing. If you've been paying attention to the video, you'll notice how good I am about right, playing around these timings. I will say though, just to humble myself a little bit, I had a really bad bot death here. So the enemy team Roche top uh, on the opposite side of the map, but a very common play after you Roche is to hit the portal, right? A lot of, uh, at least in high MMR games, it's a really high, uh, really common play. And so they end up Roching here. I didn't really give it any respect because like I knew that they could hit the portal, but I just, I don't know. I just, I just didn't give them respect and I ended up getting caught, right? I was able to blink out, but unfortunately they had a TA trap, which I think is part of the reason they hit the portal. They probably saw me walking in this area with the TA traps, which is, you know, unfortunate, but it is something I, I have to keep in mind. Uh, and I didn't. And I ended up dying here. And this is a really bad death because I have Doom. I have Shivas. My BKB also died on Courier. So I would have been totally fine there if I could have BKB TP out. Venge, no way she was close enough, right? Because I, I also had BKB, but it died to the DK, which was also super bad. So really terrible sequence for me actually got us, uh, it got a Rax killed. So pretty terrible and, and that is something you have to be careful about right the portal play also just dying close to your base uh is really really terrible in the, in the late game and eventually how doom works is you get refresher orb and you know with octarine and refresher orb this hero is absolutely terrifying you're obscenely uh tanky because you have shiva's armor and two bkbs uh and two aoe shivas i also was able to get trickster's cloak so i have some magic resistance and a little bit of evasion against TA. She did buy an MKB. This guy does not though, so we should be pretty survivable against him. All in all though, at this point in the game, I am an absolute unit. And that's how Doom works. If you make a good enough good decisions and you delay the game long enough, this hero eventually becomes arguably the strongest hero in Dota, right? Especially when you hit level 25, which I don't have yet, but a Doom applies mute means that they can't use their items, especially BKB, right? Or four staffs when you Doom them. And so uh, that is a big timing. I don't have that yet, but notice in this team fight, I mean, this is when Doom becomes uh, an absolute unit. You have the war stomp, so you have a stun as well. And yeah, we can go into this fight, leading with our Shivas, right? Obviously get that spell amp for our team. And then, yeah, I mean, everyone just has to run. And that's the reality of Doom. You just make everyone sprint away. Four staff force. This guy's booking it. He's like, shit. <laughs> the Doom is coming. So I Doom the Venge here, which I think is fine. Like, you know, my troll was chasing up. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Just kill the support. It's really not that long of a cooldown. It's a 90 second cooldown as well. So like, it's really not that big of a deal. And we were able to chase here, right? Because they are all running away. We got that initial pick off. I was able to find the Darks here. I even refresh here just to stomp again. I didn't doom him because I honestly thought that he would have died, but he had cheese. This guy lives. He had cheese and he just walked it off. But we're able to chase on the TA. And I mean, at this point in the game, Doom's chase potential is just ridiculous because you have Scorched Earth cooldowns. So your Scorched Earth is almost permanent uptime with Octarine. 
right? It's a 19 second cooldown with a 16 second duration, right? So it's basically always up. And so you can just chase, chase, chase. You do a ton of damage and this TA just can't get away from you. It gets refraction up, but I'm able to hit the stun, stop her from blinking during that refraction period. And we chase her down. Didn't even have to use the second doom here. And yeah, the next team fight is about the same thing. The enemy team makes a pretty good smoke play. They find our troll, but he was able to get off his ultimate and he actually had refresher orb. Interestingly enough, you can click BKB and refresher orb during trolled now that you can use items during trolled, which is pretty funny, pretty based, honestly, for my troll. Uh, but yeah, in typical doom fashion, we go in. Uh, I don't, I guess I missed him with him. Oh, I must have missed. Yeah, I, oh, I missed him. I was like, why didn't this guy get stunned? Maybe I should have went in with War Stomp. I guess it's more reliable because I could have gotten the Doom. At this point, they had actually a Lotus on two of their heroes. They had a Lincolns as well on two of their heroes. So that's obviously what you have to be careful about. Um, you can actually take certain creeps to like break the Lincolns, like the Purge creep, but you know, I'm not really playing around that. However, like I forced this guy to TP out. I mean, blink away so he can't go in. This guy has to run away and I just end up dooming the tiny, which is fine. Like dooming supports a late game is some people think it's bad. It's not like if it's going to solo kill them, right? Essentially. And it's really just value, especially when you have refresher, it's going to enable, right? The enemy team might try to save them and you're going to get off another doom. And we found the darks here as well. Stomp him up and you can tell this game is coming to a close. They can't really fight, right? My troll is an absolute beast at this point in the game. My void spirit has a bajillion net worth. My supports are starting to come online, right? My fury and has like core net worth. And uh, yeah, we, we eventually wrap up the game here as I still had doom. So eventually, I think I doomed the TA here, which did get Lotus and she had Ags and that actually reflects, um, <laughs> it reflects Ags doom on TB. So I, I was very careful about not dooming my teammates, but yeah, it was good enough to kill the TA there. She had buyback, but it didn't matter. And yeah, that's going to be all for today's video. Just wanted to give you guys some very simple but important points for recovering into the game. This can be applied to all roles, right? Obviously, some of this is a doom guide, especially the late game portion here. But I do want you guys to keep in mind if you're playing any hero that has sort of playmaking potential, whether or not you're support, a mid or an offlane, look to split up the map in these hard games and go for these kills. But commit only to the point optimally where you can try to disengage at the end, where you can bait these four or five TPs, make the enemy team make this massive reaction that is not beneficial for their net worth, right? It opens up the map for your carry. If you can make this happen, you can help recover these games. So instead of moving back towards your towers, move out on the map. And if you don't find the kills, at least if you've moved out on the map and you die, it's not going to be that big of a deal. You're probably farming creep waves. And when they kill you, they're not near a tower. And you probably also will have TP to come back to your side of the map and defend a tower or join a fight if needed. Right? It really is a great play to make in these in these losing games. And that is the mindset you should have. But right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.